right, so I thought that I would make uh, a video uh, going over some fetches, and we're going to all do this, Heather, uh, where I haven't really utilized this API and in a long time, so I don't know if anything has changed, but if you are at a point in your coding where you are needing to practice some fetching, fetching some data from an API, then this video is going to be for you. All right, and so feel free to follow along. And again, I'm going to be in Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to be utilizing something here called Live Server uh, that will help spin up uh, a live preview of the HTML so that we can see what's going on. I'm also going to utilize Postman just to validate and verify things before I actually go and uh, start coding with this. So. Those are the, some of the things that you may want to have set up, or you don't really need Postman unless you want to test the endpoints like I'm going to be uh, doing in this video. So there is going to be a little bit of uh, starter code that you see on your screen here. I, I just have two files, uh, honestly, and uh, I have an index.html and index.js uh, all located in the same folder. And uh, as you can see in here, this is just your standard HTML. There's no HTML that's going to be visible for us to see, uh, but in order to conduct a fetch and get a fetch going, uh, we do need to have this in the browser rather than us to run this via Node. So uh, let's go ahead uh, and, and kind of get started with this. I did also put in a, a real quick console log saying that it works uh, because sometimes when you're just starting off, uh, it might be a good little tip for you to try out is for you to put just a simple console log in there to make sure that your JavaScript file is properly linked to your page. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start up the, the live server here. And so I, you have to do that with the index.html or the HTML file itself. And that way we can see what's going on here. So again, you're just going to get something that's localhost up here. And in order to test to see if things are working, I'm going to open up the dev tools. So you can either hit the F12 button on your keyboard or right click and inspect. And if we come up here and we take a look at the console, that's where we can see where things are going to go on. So perfect. Uh, we see that it works, which is what we're wanting to see. Okay. Now, anytime we make edits to our index, .js file, it should reflect in here because it's looking for any types of changes. So if you have autosave on, uh, you may see some errors uh, as you're typing, but uh, finish the typing, uh, let it solve its problems, and uh, again, you won't have to typically refresh your browser because it does it automatically for you. Okay, so one of the things that, like I said, I'm going to try and test out here uh, is this API that we have here. And looking at the documentation, again, I'm going to put this in the description below. But where I am visiting is I'm just trying to grab the current weather. And just reading the documentation here, it just says here that uh, you can utilize this, this URL. Okay, uh, It's going to be a GET request, and you can supply in some data, right? Uh, whether that be latitude and then also longitude. And then we also need to have an API key. So... You will need to sign up for an API key. Again, it's all free. Uh, you know, it says that you're allowed to do a thousand pulls per day. So uh, we're definitely not going to do that in our practice of this. And then it gives you an example here of what one of those API calls will look like. And they supplied the latitude of 44.34 as well as the longitude of 10.99. And then we want to have the API key uh, that we can get from our login. And then the other thing that I also try to take a look at is uh, the JSON data, the format that's in here. And it, you know, if we were wanting to access temperatures and stuff, you can see that it's inside of here. I, I did notice that these temperatures look kind of hot, uh, and that is only because it's in degree Kelvin, and that's what, is, what they give you in this. And it looks like if we take a look at units, uh, we are able to maybe change from standard metric imperial uh, type of unit. So we'll, we'll check that stuff out as well as we go along. Okay, but 
Uh, this URL that I see right here would be a good one for me to kind of test and, and try out in my, in my Postman. So uh, I'm going to copy this real quick, and then I'm going to come into Postman and, and test this out. So uh, again, I'm just going to uh, create a new Git request. I'm going to paste in here what we see. And uh, for the API key, I'm just going to come down here and uh, we're going to, uh, I'm actually going to paste it down here for the app ID for our API key. So let me go grab the API key. And I'm not too concerned with uh, showing you all the, the API key itself, but um, because I can deactivate it, so, so it doesn't matter. So you guys will have to go get your own. I will deactivate this after I get done uh, utilizing it. Again, you can generate your own API key here and then you're just going to copy this and that should be your key so i'm going to plug that in here and just see if i can get anything from this simple request so it says my i have an invalid api key uh, so let's take a look at why does it feel that it's uh, an invalid one it looks like i have an extra carriage returned in here and that may be why so just something to pay attention to and there we go my api key is now good to go all right Perfect, so now I know that my key works. Now that tells me that if I go into JavaScript and I apply what I have up here, then uh, I, I should be able to get it to work. So I'm gonna copy this entire URL that I have, and I'm just going to store it in a variable inside of my JavaScript file. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'll do like let pi URL equal, and then I'm just gonna put quotes in here and then I'm going to paste that, okay? Uh, later on, we'll, we'll play around with the URL to make it a little more uh, dynamic to know what type of units we might get or what we might not get, okay? Okay, so now that we have that, uh, another thing that you, you may want to kind of do uh, just to make things a little bit easier and readable, uh, we can say something like let uh, API key equal, and then you can put the API key here, and then that means down here, we can just put add a plus and then the, the API key. All right, so now that we have the API key, we also have the API URL. Now let's see if we can uh, create uh, a function here that will allow us to conduct this fetch and get some data back. So I'm going to uh, have a function here. We're gonna say the following, we're gonna do uh, function get weather now the thing that I would like to put on here is I would like to make this an asynchronous function and uh, that means that we're going to be able to await the response that we get back from the URL that we have right from the API endpoint uh, we get to await it it looks a lot cleaner whenever we're utilizing async and await okay so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to say uh, let equal await fetch, and then I'm going to supply it the API URL, okay? And then the next thing that I'm going to do is we need to take that response that we get back and grab the data from it uh, that comes in a JSON format. So we can say something like let data, equal await, and then a response.json. Now this is typically the pattern that you're going to want to follow whenever you're trying to do these little API requests because you're going to notice that once you reach out to this API, it's going to come back with a response, and then you're going to need to utilize this .json, which happens to be another promise that gets fulfilled now, before we kind of go into this, I would also encourage you to wrap this in a try catch. So that way we can try out this code here. And if we fail at any point, uh, we can go ahead and catch the error. Okay, all right. And then we'll, we'll wrap this with a final curly bracket. And now we have a function that we can kind of use the last step to this is let's go ahead and console log the data that we get back. All right, so we have all that set up. 
Now we just need to call the function of get weather for this to work. So let's try that out. We're going to do get weather, and then let me bring up the code here, as well as the console log area. And you can see that we already have, i move this out of here. If I already have a response back from the API, right? And this should look exactly like what we have from the Postman, right? So if I take a look at the Postman, I should have the exact same things here. So I see coordinates are 10.99 and latitude 44.34. So let's look at that. So I have chords here, 10.99 and then 10.99. So it's the exact same items that are on here that we saw in Postman. So again, Postman is a real great uh, reference tool to use when we're trying to debug things because if it doesn't work in Postman, then it may not work when you try to code it out. So another tool for you to put in your tool belt there. So one of the things that I would uh, encourage uh, learners to try to navigate with is, hey, great, console logged this, right? Now, what does that look like if I did want to get down to the feels like? Okay, so I want to navigate all the way down to the feels like. So if you remember that we just console logged something here called data, right? And data is, right now, it looks like it is an object. And again, we can probably maybe better see this in Postman. But if we look right here, this indicates that it is an object. And if I wanted to get down to the temperature section, right? If this whole object here is called data and I'm utilizing dot notation, I can do data. And then come down here and be dot main. And then look what we have right here. We have another curly bracket, right? And I said that we wanted to go to the feels like, right? So uh, again, this whole thing at the very start of this is called data dot main dot feels like. So let's go ahead and try that out in the code and see what that looks like. Let me bring up our browser here. Okay. So we already have data, so let's do data.main, and let's just see what that looks like now. You see how over here we've now stepped into that object, okay? And now we can come back with it feels like, so dot feels like, so dot main dot feels like, okay? So let's save that, and there we go. We have a valid number, okay? So pretty, pretty cool. So now we're able to fetch uh, with this in, inside of JavaScript. Let's talk about, are we able to change the data to something else, right? So that right now that's in the Greek Helvin. Let's take a look at the notes here. So it looks like if we come to units, we have something here. Uh, if we do units and then we can apply standard metric. All right, so let's, let's test some of this stuff out. Let me get rid of this right here, and we'll do a plus, and then we'll do and units equals metric, and let's see what that gives us. So there we go, we get uh, Celsius, all right. What are some other ones that we could do? We have standard, so if we save that and run that, we get the Kelvin. If we do imperial, let's see what we get there. And then we get the 42.06. So uh, that's going to be your, your Fahrenheit. So I know uh, a lot of times when we look at these, we're like, oh man, we're going to, have to create another function in order to convert Kelvin to uh, Fahrenheit or con convert it to Celsius. So it looks like they provide us with a method for us to, to do that within the URL itself. All right. Good deal. Well, uh, I think that is going to do it for this one as far as just getting data, giving you the practice to get the data. What I would recommend trying out if you're looking to expand the, your, your knowledge with this is if you can get more things to console log, right? Eventually the goal for you is to get this to display on the HTML page 
uh, because nobody's going to look in the console for all this information. But this video was just going over fetching to get you used to it, right? So see if you can get to the current temperature, right? See if you can do the max and the min. See if you can get to the humidity uh, and, and all those uh, other items that you see that Open Weather API is giving us for us to use. All right. So, hey, thanks for watching this. Definitely appreciate it. And make sure that you like and subscribe if you ended up getting something out of this uh, video lesson today.